let's see. Andy writes, can we dig deeper into bindings? For instance, binding magic. Um, is, uh, it is not an agreement. Okay, there are forms of binding magic that we attempt. And the, the, but I would say with the the degree to which an actual binding can work on a unaware third party in our current frame of reference, in my opinion, is extraordinarily limited. Um, if it were not so, we'd see it happening all the time. Every time someone wanted to succeed and make a million dollars. And why aren't people binding people so they make a million dollars? You know, like we, it's something we, we, no, I know, I know you're not, I know you're not advocating for the record, but it is, it is something that I see come across my desk periodically where folks are like, you know, I feel like I've been affected. And I'm like, well, there, there are probably other circumstances. In the case of a binding ritual that involves two completely aware, consenting, conscientious adults who are not insane and, you know, who are not acting in duress, then you, now you're cooking with Christo, uh, Crisco, you know, um, now you're, now you've got some, some muscle because well, from my experience after working with this for so long and, and, and communicating with many others you know it, it's not harry potter for us out there folks our power our magic our influence upon the universe is extraordinarily subtle which is why in eastern philosophy it's called you know it's referred to as a subtle energy or subtle force we have a lot this is why for instance governments go to such extraordinary levels to to do what they do to suborn the will of the people right um and and to keep them in in a particular way it's it's because you can't just mind whammy the public we all got our own brains and most of them are extraordinarily rigid and well adapted and and unbrainwashable so you know it, it's it, I don't think, in spite of watching on Charmed or any other, you know, shows where they'll they'll show some wicked person um, uh, taking a, a red twine and putting it around um, a, a a poppet that represents the person because of stuff with their hair and fingernails or something, and and then they do their thing. Um, and supposedly they have some control over them. I don't feel that that's a thing. I feel that that may at one point, perhaps historically, when there was a lot more juice in the system, that might have been a thing. Maybe. I don't know. But it really does feel more like magical thinking or wishful thinking than actual thinking. Because we have a lot more power simply by speaking to people. Like, if you want to bind someone, you can captivate a person simply through speech. This has been demonstrated over and over and over again, where someone with great charisma and verbal capacity can sway literally millions of people and have them go nuts over them, become a cult of personality. They're not out there with red twine getting people all worked up. They're using what we can do. They're vibrating themselves to the point at which they're an attractant. That they're, by executing the sacred masculine principle of projection and attraction, they are able to draw that to themselves. And that by simultaneously activating that sacred feminine principle of reception, diminishing their resistance, they're able to accept it. They're able to draw it to themselves. There's always two parts. That's why so many people, they fail at this whole um, uh, positive thinking thing. Because they're like, law of attraction, law of attraction, law of attraction. And no one's ever talking about law of reception, law of reception, law of reception. You can attract all day long, but if you're unwilling to receive that blessing, it will bounce clean off of you and you'll get nothing. So you have to understand that, that the function then is to draw it down to you 
and 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 accept it. It's 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 like being a receiver in football, and you reach your hands up to catch that ball, and then you scoop it in and tuck it. You know that's what you do, and and if you're not doing that second part, it doesn't matter how awesome the quarterback was or how cleanly that ball was tossed to you. If you're not reaching up to grab it and pulling it down to tuck it, right? You're attracting it to you and receiving it. You won't get it. You won't be able to fulfill that potential. So that's, that's the stuff that I think we should focus on and work with because if it, it's far better rather than to focus our magic externally in the way that could be seen vibratorily as counterproductive, right? Wouldn't it be better to just work on your own vibe? Make it so that the other person is incapable of causing you harm or distress. One, maybe because you put them into context and now their influence is diminished. And two, maybe because your vibration is such that you're no longer attracting any form of negative input. It really does come down to us. If you want something to change, I know it sounds cliche, but we do need to become, first and foremost, the change that we want to see happen. That's that act of faith. Because you don't know if it's going to pay off. You don't know if that, that mental alchemy that you're engaging in, where you're sitting there and taking the forces of the universe into your mind, and drawing your will upon them to make a change within yourself so that you can then affect change outside. It literally is the up, up, and away. Going in, in, and then boom! Big explosive move. Out and away. Gone. I'm out. I'm doing my thing. I'm being positive. I'm drawing it all in, and I'm, I'm tucking it. <laughs> I'm catching the ball. So, yeah, that's, that's definitely um, a big part of it. And, and so my, my biggest advice is, is to concern yourself less with, with and, and I'm not just speaking to you, Andy, I'm talking to everybody here, but concern yourself less with the control of others, which we know because we see every day this attempted, the fact that it has to be a full court press, multimedia all the time, 24 seven, everyone in your face constantly with every little possible idea, that kind of stuff, if it's turned off, it immediately goes away and there's zero pressure, which means it's not sustainable. It has to constantly be pushed at you. On the other hand, if, you are simply creating a domain within yourself of peace and you're extending that domain to each and every person that you meet because you're at peace with yourself. You don't feel like you need to worry about what the other person's thinking because as far as you're concerned, you're, you're, you're in it together. This is that namaste moment, right? Where you're, you're like, I see the divinity in you and honor it. By, by treating you as I would be treated and raising that overall vibe. Imagine that collectively turning into this giant cascade force. I have so many things in my head, right? Constantly in meditation, I'm like, yes, we can reach this tipping point. I'm totally into it. But we just have to sit there and recognize that first contract, that first thing that we do, that's a contract with the self. That's where we choose to bind ourselves with that which sustains us. Just like a, a, anything else in the universe seeks that which, which strengthens it. Even plants will turn and face the sun because that's where the light is. And, and that's what we do. We turn and face that. We transmute that. We turn it into something special. We share it with other people. We, we, we share a light. We pull out that, you know, from under the bushel. Shall we begin?
Let's be 